Despite its 70 to $80 billion total available market, computer storage is like a small town. Everybody knows everybody else. We say in the storage world, there are a hundred people and 99 seats. Infinidat is a company that was founded in 2011 by storage legend, legend Moshe Yanai. The company is known for building products with rock solid availability, simplicity, and a passion for white glove service and client satisfaction. The company went through a leadership change recently and early this year appointed industry vet Phil Bollinger as CEO. It's making more moves, bringing on longtime storage sales exec Richard Bradbury to run EMEA and APJ go to market and just recently appointed marketing maven Eric Herzog to be CMO. Herzog has worked at numerous companies ranging from startups that were acquired, two stints at IBM and as SVP of product marketing and management at storage powerhouse EMC, among others. Herzog has been named CMO of the year as an OnCon icon and top 100 influencer in big data, AI, and also hybrid cloud, along with yours truly, if I may say so. Joining me today is the newly minted CMO of Infinidat, Mr. Eric Herzog. Good to see you, Eric. Thanks for coming on. Dave, thank you very much. You know we love being on the Cube, and I am, of course, sporting my Infinidat logo wear already, even though I've only been on the job for two weeks. Dude, no Hawaiian shirt. Okay, that's a pretty buttoned up company. <laughs> well, next time I'll have a Hawaiian shirt, don't worry. <laughs> right. Okay, okay, so give us the backstory. How did this all come about? You, 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 I'm sure you know Phil, my 99 seat joke, but, but how did it come about? Tell us that story. Uh, so I have known Phil since the late 90s when he was uh, VP at LSI of engineering. And he, I was working at a company called Milex, which is acquired, was acquired by IBM. And we were doing a product for HP and he was providing the subsystem and we were providing the fiber to fiber and fiber to SCSI array controllers back in the day. So I met him then, we kept in touch for years. And then when I was a senior VP at EMC, he started originally as VP of engineering for the EMC Isilon team. And then he became the general manager. So while I didn't work for him, I worked with him a at LSI and then again at uh, EMC. So we, I just happened to congratulate him about some award he won and he said, hey Herzog, we should talk. I have a CMO opening. So it literally happened over LinkedIn discussion where I reached out to him and congratulated him and said, hey, I need a CMO, let's talk. So the whole thing took about three weeks in all honesty and that included interviewing with other members of his exec staff. That's awesome, that's right. He was running the Isilon division for a while at EMC. Right. You guys were there and of course, you, know, you talk about Milex, LSI, there was a period of time where you, you, know, you guys were making subsystems for everybody. So you sort of saw the whole landscape. So you got you know, some serious storage history and, and chops. So I'm, I want to ask you, what attracted you to Infinidat? I mean, obviously they're a leader in the Magic Quadrant. We know about Infinibox and the petabyte scale and the low latency, but what are the, when you look at the market, you obviously, you see it, you talk to everybody. What were the trends that were driving your decision to join Infinidat? Well, a couple of things. First of all, as you know, and you guys have talked about on theCUBE, most CIOs don't know anything about storage other than they know guy got to spend money on it. So the Infinibat message of optimizing applications, workloads, and use cases with 100% guaranteed availability, unmatched reliability, the set and forget ease of use, which obviously AI ops is driving that in overall IT operations management was very attractive. And then on top of that, the reality is when you do that consolidation, which Infinidat can do because of the performance that it has, you can dramatically free up rack, stack, power, floor, and operational manpower by literally getting rid of, you know, tons and tons of arrays. There's one customer that they have, you actually found out when I got here, they took out a hundred arrays from EMC and Hitachi, and that company now has 20 Infiniboxes and Infinibox SSAs running the exact same workloads that used to be, you know, well over a hundred subsystems from the other players. So that's got a performance angle, a CapEx and OpEx angle, and then even uh, a clean energy angle because reducing uh, watts and slots. So lots of different um, advantages there. And then I think from a, just a pure marketing perspective, uh, as uh, someone has said, they're the best kept secret of the storage industry. And so you need to, if you will, amp up the message, uh, get it out. Um, they've expanded the portfolio with the Infini uh, Infinibox SSA, the InfiniGuard product, which is really optimized not only as a, a PBA for a backup perspective, and it works with all the backup vendors, but also has an incredible play on data and cyber resilience 
uh, with their capability of local uh, logical air gapping, remote logical air gapping, and creating a clean room, if you will, a vault, so that you can then recover there review for malware or ransomware before you do a full recovery. So it's got the right solutions, just that most people didn't know who they were. So between the relationship with Phil and the real opportunity that this company could skyrocket. In fact, we have 35 job openings right now, right uh, now. Okay, so yeah, I, I think it was Duplessis called him the best kept secret. He's not the only one. And so, you know, so that, that brings us to you and your mission, because it, it's true, it, it is a best kept secret. You know, you're a leader in the Gartner Magic Quadrant, but I mean, if you're not a leader in a Gartner Magic Quadrant, you're kind of nobody in, uh, in storage. And so, but you got, you got chops in block storage. You talked about the consolidation story. And I've talked to many folks in Infinidad about that. Ken Steinhardt, rest his soul, Dr. Rico, good business friend about, you know, so that that play and how you handle the whole blast radius. And that's always a great discussion. And, and Infinidad has proven that it can operate at very, very high performance, low latency, petabyte scale. Uh, so how do you get the word out? What's your mission? Well, so we're going to do a couple of things. We're going to be very, very tied to the channel. Um, as you know, um, EMC, Dell EMC, and these are articles that have been in CRN and other channel publications um, is pulling back from the channel, letting go of channel managers. And there's been a lot of conflict. So we're going to embrace the channel. We already do well over 90% of our business through the channel globally. So we're doing that. In fact, I am meeting personally next week with five different CEOs of channel partners of which only one of them is doing business with Infinidat now. So you want to expand our channel and leverage the channel, take advantage of these changes in the channel. We are going to be increasing our presence in the public relations area, the work we do with all the industry analysts, and not just in North America, but in Europe as well, and Asia. Uh, we're going to amp up, of course, our social media effort. Um, both of us, of course, haven't been named uh, some of the best social media guys uh, in the world the last couple of years. So we're going to uh, open that up and then obviously uh, increase our demand generation activities as well. So we're going to make sure that we leverage what we do uh, and deliver that message to the world, um, deliver it to the partner base so the partners can take advantage and make good margin and revenue, but delivering products that really meet the needs of the customers while saving them dramatically on CapEx and OpEx. So the partner wins and the end user wins. And that's the best scenario you can do when you're leveraging the channel to help you grow your business. So you're not only just a marketing guy, I mean, you know product, you ran product management at very senior levels. So you could, you're like a walking spec sheet, John Furrier says, you could just rattle it <laughs> off and already impressed that how much you know about Infinidat. But when you joined EMC, it was almost like, you know, there was too many products, right? When you, when you joined IBM, even though it had a big portfolio, it's like it didn't have enough relevant products and you had to sort of deal with that. How do you feel about the product portfolio at Infinidat? Well, for us, it's right in the perfect niche. Enterprise class, AI-based software defined storage technology that happens to run on a hybrid array, an all flash array, has a variant that's really tuned towards modern data protection, including data and cyber resilience. So with those three elements of the portfolio, which by the way, all have a common architecture. So while there are three different solutions, all common architecture. So if you know how to use the InfiniBox, you can easily use an InfiniGuard. You got an InfiniGuard, you can easily use an InfiniBox SSA. So the capability of doing that helps reduce operational manpower and hence of course, OPEX. So the story is strong technically. The story has a strong business tie-in. So, you know, part of the thing you have to do in marketing these days you know, we've both been around. So you could just talk about IOPS and latency and bandwidth. And if the people didn't, if the CIO didn't know what that meant, so what? But, you know, the world has changed on the expenditure of infrastructure. If you don't have seamless integration with hybrid cloud virtual environments and containers, which Infinidat can do all that, then you're not relevant from a CIO perspective. And obviously with many workloads moving to the cloud, you've got to have this infrastructure that supports core edge and cloud the virtualization layer, and of course the container layer across a hybrid environment. And we can do that with all three of these solutions yet with a common underlying software defined storage architecture. So it makes the technical story very powerful. Then you turn that into business benefit, CapEx, OpEx, the operational manpower, um, unmatched availability, which is a, obviously a big deal these days. 
unmatched performance. You know, everybody wants their SAP workload or their Oracle or Mongo Cassandra to be, you know, instantaneous from the app perspective, <laughs> excuse me. And we can do that. And, and that's the kind of thing that my job is to translate that from that technical value into the business value that can be appreciated by the CIO, by the CISO, by the VP of software development, who then says to the VP of infrastructure, you know, that is that infinite ad stuff. We, we actually need that for our SAP workloader. Wow, you know, for our overall corporate cybersecurity strategy, the CISO says, you know, the key element of the storage part of that overall corporate cybersecurity strategy are those Infinite Act guys with their great cyber and data resilience. And that's the kind of thing that my job and my team's job to work on to get the market to understand and appreciate that uh, business value that the underlying technology delivers. So the other thing, the interesting thing about Infinite Act, this was always a source of of spirited discussions over the years with my, my business friends from Infinidat was y y the company figured out a way, it was formed in 2011. And at the time, the strategy perfectly reasonable to say, okay, let's build a better box. And the way they approached that from a cost standpoint was you were able to get the most out of spinning disc. Everybody else was moving to a flash. Of course, you know, floyers work, big flash, you know, all flash data center, et cetera, et cetera. But Infinidat with its memory cache and its architecture was able, its algorithms was able to figure out how to magically get you know, equivalent or better performance in an all flash array out of uh, a system that had you know, a lot of spinning disks, which is, which is I think unique. I mean, I, I know it's unique, very rare anyway. And so that was kind of interesting, and it, but at the time it made sense to go after a big market with a better mousetrap. Now, you know, if I were starting a company today, I might, I might take a different approach. I might try to build a, you know, a storage cloud or something like that. Or if I had a huge install base that I was trying to protect, I'd try to protect that and maybe go into that. But so what's the strategy? You still got huge share gain potentials for on-prem. Is that the vector? You mentioned hybrid cloud. Is, what's the cloud strategy? Maybe you could summarize your thoughts on that. Sure, so the cloud strategy is, first of all, seamless integration to hybrid cloud environments. For example, we support Outpost as right. an example. Second thing, you'd be surprised at the number of cloud providers that actually use us as their backend, either for their primary storage or for their secondary storage. So we've got some of the largest hyperscalers in the world. Uh, for example, one of the telcos has 150 InfiniBoxes, InfiniBox SSAs and InfiniGuards. 150 running one of the largest telcos on the planet and a huge percentage of that is their you know corporate cloud effort where they're going in and saying don't use amazon or azure why don't you use us the giant telco so we've got that angle we've got a ton of mid sized cloud providers all over the world that their backup as a service or their primary storage that they offer is built on top of infiniboxes or infinibox ssa so the cloud strategy is one to arm the hyperscalers, both big, medium, and small with what they need to provide the right end user services with the right SLAs. And the second thing is to have that hybrid cloud integration capability. For example, when I talked about InfiniGuard, we can do air gapping locally to give almost instantaneous recovery, but at the same time, if there's an earthquake in California or a tornado in Kansas City, or a tsunami in Singapore, you've got to have that uh, remote air gapping capability, which InfiniGuard can do, which of course is a, essentially that logical air gap remote is basically a cloud strategy. So, and we can do all of that. that that's why, you know, it has a cloud strategy play. And again, you know, we have a number of public references in the cloud, US Signal and others, where they talk about why they use the InfiniBox and our technologies to offer their stored storage cloud services based on our platform. Okay, so I got to ask you, so you mentioned earthquakes, a lot of earthquakes <clears throat> in California, dangerous place to live, US headquarters in Waltham. Are we going to pry you out of the, the golden state? <laughs> uh, let's see, I was born at Stanford Hospital where my parents <laughs> met when they were going there. I've never lived anywhere but here. And of course, as you remember, when I was working for EMC, I flew out every week and I sort of lived at that Mil uh, Mil Milford, Courtyard Marriott. So uh, I'll be out a lot, but I will not be uh, moving. I'm a Silicon Valley guy, just like that old book, the Silicon Valley guy from the old, <laughs> that's me. Yeah, the hotels in Waltham, a little better, but. Uh, so, <laughs> so what? what's your priority? Last question, what's the priority first hundred days? Where, where's your focus? 
Uh, number one priority is team assessment and integration of the team across the other teams. One of the things I noticed about um, um, Infinite, which is a little unusual, is there sometimes are silos. And you know, having done seven other small companies and startups, in a startup or small company, you usually don't see that siloness. So we have to break down those walls. And, uh, and by the way, we've been incredibly successful even with the silos. Imagine if everybody realized that business is a team sport. <laughs> and so we're going to do that and do heavy levels of integration. We've already started to do an incredible outreach program to the press and to partners. Um, we won a couple awards recently. We're up for two more awards in Europe, the SDC awards. And uh, one of the channel publications is going to give us an award next week. So, you know, we're amping up that sort of thing that we can leverage and extend both in the short term, but also, of course, uh, across across a longer term strategy. So those are things we're going to do, do first. And, you know, we're going to be rolling into, of course, 2022. So we've got a lot of work we're doing. As I mentioned, I'm meeting, you know, five partner CEOs and only four, one of them is doing business with us now. So we want to get those partners to kick off January with, you know, us presenting at their sales kickoff going, we are going with Infinidad as one of our strong storage providers. So we're doing all that upfront work in the first hundred days. We can kick off Q1 um, with a real bang. Love the channel story. And you're a good guy to do that. And you mentioned the silos, correct me if I'm wrong, but Infinidad does a lot of business in overseas, a lot of business in Europe, obviously the affinity to the, to, the, to the engineering, a lot of the engineering work that's going on in Israel, but that's by its very nature, stovepipe, most startups start in the US, you know, big market, NFL cities, and then sort of go overseas. It's almost like Infinidat sort of simultaneously grew its overseas business and its US business. Well, and we've got customers everywhere. We've got them in South Africa, all over Europe, Middle East. We have six very large customers in India and a number of large customers in Japan. So we have a sales team all over the world. Um, as you mentioned, our white glove service includes not only our field systems engineers, but we have a professional services group. We've actually written custom software for several customers. Um, in fact, I was on the forecast meeting uh, earlier today and one of the comments that was made for someone who's going to give us a PO. So the sales guy was saying, part of the reason we're getting the PO is we did some professional services work last quarter and the CIO called and said, I can't believe it. And what CIO calls up a storage company these days, but the CIO called up and said, I can't believe the work you did. We're going to buy some more stuff this quarter. So that white glove service, our technical account managers to go along with the field sales SEs and this professional service is pretty unusual in a small company to have that level of, as you mentioned yourself, white glove service when the company is so small. And that's been a real, real hidden gem for this company and will continue to be so. Well, Eric, congratulations on the appointment, uh, the new role. Excited to see you know, what you do and how you craft the, the story, the strategy. And, uh, and we've been following Infinidat since you know, sort of day zero and, and uh, really wish you the best. Great, well, thank you very much. Always appreciate the Cube and trust me, Dave, next time I will have my famous Hawaiian shirt. Ah, I can't wait. All right, uh, thanks to Eric and thank you for watching everybody. This is Dave Vellante for the Cube and we'll see you next time.